from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. I am looking at my email. I'm like, this is outrageous. This is outrageous. I, 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 you know, I keep trying to get off this idea in my mind, and I can't get off of this. Look, look what this guy has to say. The letter writer's name is Tony Ramirez. I don't normally read the last name of a letter writer, but there's probably more than one Tony Ramirez here in town, I would say. So we don't know which Tony Ramirez is writing in. It's not a name we haven't heard before. Tony writes in and says, hello, Tom. I'm writing to answer your question of why people are reacting with disagreement about your second home. By the way, if you didn't hear about this, I want a second home in Santa Barbara area. Santa Barbara County somewhere. It's not in the city of Santa Barbara. It's up there. 20 acres. Ladies, get close to the speakers for a second. I want to say something to you. 20 acres. Anyway, Tony says people are reacting with disagreement about my second home. He says, because in Los Angeles, he says 88% of the people cannot afford to own a home, let alone two homes. And that's why people should disagree about this. Says here, it seems like the people who say that anyone can be successful in this country are white or of European ancestry. <laughs> oh, is that so? This is a racial issue? Says here, most people in this country are not white and would disagree with you. Well, first of all, most people in Southern California are not white, but in the country, that's still not true. So, Tony, you're wrong about that. And by the way, just because anyone can be successful, Tony, it doesn't mean that everybody uses the ability they have. It doesn't mean that everybody works as hard as they could, Tony. Tony says here in Los Angeles, where today only 12% of people who live here can afford to buy a median-priced home. By the way, that's not a complete sentence. Tony. Tony. Tony, it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are or what your race is, white, black, brown, yellow, or whatever you are, writing a complete sentence would make it more likely that you can afford to buy a home. And my recommendation to you, and by the way, I don't know what your specific ethnicity is, Tony, but my recommendation might be to, uh, you know, learn how to write a complete sentence. Yes, he says in Los Angeles, where today only 12% of people who live here can afford to buy a medium-priced home, period. Goes on to say, actually, comma, while home ownership in this country has never been higher, comma, in Los Angeles, it has never been lower. And then he refers me to a website, and when I tried to go to the link, uh, it bumped me uh, to some other page of the website. I didn't actually get to read the story, which I tried to read. I tried to go to it. Uh, but the uh, website, just so you know, is for an organization called the Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy. Let me read to you from this uh, page just two paragraphs, which will give you an idea of where Tony was trying to send me here. 
Uh, I guess uh, Los Angeles Alliance for New Economy calls itself Lane for short. It says here, building a city of justice. At Lane, we are committed to building a new economy that restores the American dream of fair wages and benefits in return for hard work. We believe that jobs in growing industries which cannot be exported, including those in the fast-growing service sector, must serve as the foundation for rebuilding a strong and vibrant middle class. Lane has created an exciting new model for improving the lives of working men and women and building healthy communities, integrating policy research, community organizing, and communications. We have helped win living wages and better job opportunities for tens of thousands of workers and more sustainable communities for residents throughout the Los Angeles region. Blah, blah, blah. You know, um, I grew up in a city that is at least as expensive as Los Angeles to live in. And in fact, I'd go so far as to say it's more expensive. The home I live in would cost five times what I paid for it in New York City. And do you know what happened when I couldn't make enough money in New York City? Do you know what happened, Tony? I moved. I didn't join organizations. I didn't stop traffic with picket signs. I moved. Okay, And I went to some place where I could afford to live, where I could find jobs, and where the wages paid enough that I could at least afford an apartment and some groceries. But it clearly you and people of your ilk, and by your ilk I mean people who think that the world owes them a living, uh, you would never lower yourself to moving to another city or... Uh, trying to uh, cut back your lifestyle and, and work a little harder. No, no, no. It's all a big conspiracy to keep you from getting ahead. So Tony goes on to say, you are feasting in front of starving people. What would you say? Sincerely, Tony Ramirez. One of the many Tony Ramirez's in the Los Angeles phone book, I would imagine, or whatever city he lives in. Um, well, Tony, here's what I would say. Uh, when I go on the radio and tell you that I bought a second home and I've got 20 acres, uh, I am not doing that uh, just to rub your face in it, though I can certainly say that's part of it. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is because it gives you and people of your ilk something to strive for. And if you guys would get off the picket lines and stop uh, sending out emails to people and start going out and rolling up your sleeves, no matter what country you're from, uh, you could be financially very, very successful. And it doesn't matter. You talk about people being European and being more successful because they're white or of European ancestry. Believe me, there's a lot of losers who are white people. Many of them call this show, for God's sake. Believe me, we talk to them all. And how would you explain the Oprah Winfrey's and the Michael Jordans of the world, the Bob Johnson's, the guy who founded BET? Uh, how would you explain all of these people? I must say that I live in Los Angeles because I love, not just like, I love the diverse population. Unlike the morons who go to uh, meetings at the office to discuss diversity like they do on the TV show The Office, where we talk about this, this very empty conversation about celebrating diversity, I like diversity. First of all, I love banging chicks of all colors. And secondly, I enjoy everything, the culture, the food, the, the vibe, the people. I, I like everything about it. And if you don't like that, you're in the wrong city. I totally love it. And always have. And the reason I've loved it is because I grew up in a neighborhood like that in the Bronx in New York City. It's just that simple. So understand that uh, uh, I am not one of these haters. I, on the contrary, I really do like living in a diverse city like this one. But I also know having grown up in a diverse neighborhood as poor as anybody in that diverse neighborhood when I was a child. That everybody who was there had the same opportunities I did. My parents had no money, no connections, no nothing. We didn't grow up with country clubs. We didn't grow up with a, with a silver spoon in our mouths. We had nothing. 
There's people in my family who still have nothing. Everybody there had the same right to go to the same schools. Everybody there had the same right to go to college. Everybody there had the same right to work hard. I am very familiar with many, many Latinos. And when I say I'm familiar with them, I'm more than friends. I mean, I know their families. I've been to their homes. I've had conversations about some of these issues. And uh, just to bring up Latinos for a moment, Tony, um, I have noticed in a number of Hispanic homes uh, that there is pressure on children not to go to college, not to graduate high school, to get out and work and support the family. And in many cases, kids do that because of the strong pull of the family. And the result of it is that they can't graduate college. They can't go out and try for certain opportunities that you could try for if you finish college. It's just a fact. Now, there are many people who think having a family is more important than anything. And therefore, if the family needs them to quit school and go to work and bring home money, that is what they will do. That's fantastic. But then don't uh, get all upset about people. Uh, who do go to school or who do uh, uh, work and move around the country. You know, uh, I have a family, too, but, uh, you know, my family wasn't necessarily as close as a number of other families. And so I left uh, New York. I, I, I left. I went 400 miles away and then 1,500 miles away and then 2,000 miles away. I worked. I took risks. I took chances. And you are seeing what result you can get when you do all of those things. Now, if people are happier having families than going out and earning a lot of money, I'm not going to criticize them for that. That's fine. But uh, don't get in my face and tell me I'm feasting in front of starving people. Am I supposed to hand over my fortune to you, Tony? Am I supposed to hand it over to your family? Am I supposed to hand it over to people who uh, go to jail or uh, smoke weed or uh, they're tweakers or uh, people who drop out of high school? Am I supposed to hand my money over that I've earned? I mean, what do you mean I'm feasting in front of starving people? Why should anyone disagree with the fact that I'm successful? Why should anyone have a problem with that? And this idea that people who are not white uh, don't have opportunity in this country... It's an insult to all the people of color who have succeeded in any number of fields. They did the same things I do, and you could do them too. And you are just jealous. Not just of me, of anybody who uh, goes out and uh, becomes successful at something. I know about this all too well. There's people in my family to this day who won't talk to me. And I know why they won't talk to me. It's because I'm sitting behind this microphone enjoying a great life. And maybe they don't have it as good as I do. By the way, there's plenty of white losers in my own family. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> plenty. I, I've talked about them on the air before. I had three first cousins. They were all brothers, all heroin addicts. Two died. One was an overdose. One shared a needle and became HIV positive, got AIDS, and died. And an ugly death it was. He was under 100 pounds when he finally went. I can't tell you about the third brother. No idea. But I must tell you that, uh, you know, these are people who decided not to take advantage of all the opportunities that people have. Stop using your ethnicity or your race as an excuse. And stop blaming me, for God's sake. What should I do? I may make my house a hotel and invite everybody up there who's homeless or invite all the people up there who live in a $500 a month apartment, come on up and stay at my place? Stupid. Unless it's a childless uh, chick who wants to come up there and bang the crap out of me, uh, there's not going to be any such invites being sent out. Bottom line, I'm, I'm blown away by this email. I'm feasting in front of starving people. By the way, starving people are not our listenership. Okay? They're not. They listen to other stations. But not this one. 
you can imagine which ones those are. Because if I say which ones those are, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Thank God for the cough button. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take your calls coming up. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. I knew you always fit, but I just didn't know it was to this extent. The Tom Likas Show. Ah, the Tom Likas Show. Ask for it by name. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And uh, I started this hour with a letter from a listener who said I am... Feasting in front of starving people by talking about uh, having a second home up in Santa Barbara County. Mm. Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Eric. What's up, Dad? Uh, the ratings and clearly my paycheck. Must be nice. Sure is. <laughs> yeah, man, I just want to congratulate you, man. I wish I was... Owning a second property is hard enough for only one, but it must be nice. Congratulations, Tom. Well, thank you. So do you think there was something wrong with mentioning this on the air? Should I have kept it a secret? No, nah, man. You work for it. It's all yours. That's where I'm going. I'm trying, at least. You're buying a second home? Where are you going to be buying? Nah, uh, not, not yet. I'm, I'm still working on paying the first one, but I'm following your footsteps. Single, no kids. I'll Good. Trying to, trying to teach the kids at work, but they don't want to listen, Tom. You got to yell at them. Well, that, that's the reason I talk about this stuff on the air, not to embarrass anybody, but to let you know what you can do. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm getting there, Tom. It's going to take some time. All right, Eric. I just wanted to congratulate you. Hey, it's my birthday. Can you take me out with a long-ass bong hit and uh, where did you go? I forgot what that one's called. <laughs> that was an old school one. I, boy, I don't even remember that one, but let's see what we have here for you. <laughs> hey, where did he go? <laughs> That's Jimmy Hoffa style. We haven't played Jimmy Hoffa style in a while. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sam, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Going great, Sam. Going great for me, too. I'm just calling. Uh, I was listening to your show. A lot of people disagree with you saying that uh, kids are a big burden on your income, but I totally agree with you. I mean, I have a nephew. Neville's a burden on my income. He's not even my kid, you know? Why uh, do you have to pay for your nephew? Uh, I mean, I buy him things here and there. I mean, my family still takes care of him, but I just like to buy him a couple things. Yeah, well, like I clothes. get my nephew, uh, you know, a birthday gift every year and a Christmas gift, and I'll fly to see him a couple of times, but, you know. Yeah. I'm not buying him groceries or anything. Oh, definitely not. Me either. Good. Yeah, and uh, I was listening. I've been listening to your show for about uh, two and a half years. was in a relationship with... Uh, my ex-girlfriend now, but girlfriend at the time, listened to all your teachings and uh, finally got rid of her. You dumped that bitch? Yeah, I dumped that bitch. She spent all my money. I had nothing to spend while I was with her. Dumped her. Finally have everything I want. I have a new car. Got clothes. Got girls. My own apartment. Having girls over, getting drunk, you know, taking care of business. Look at you. Yep, yep. Living the life now, thanks to you. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I just wanted to call and uh, tell all those people who disagree with you to uh, kick rocks because they don't know what they're talking about. I agree with you. Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. Listen, uh, this guy is full of crap, this Tony Ramirez. Uh, I'm a Hispanic as well. You know, I came to this country about 20 years ago. And, you know, I struggled at the beginning, but I went to school, get my, uh, my English together. And, you know... It took me a few a few years, but eventually, um, you know, I was able to purchase a house. I I got a wife, a good wife, kids. I mean, I don't have the luxury that you might have, but you know, I'm working hard for it, you know, to get all this stuff, you know. But it's all about work, you know. A lot of people here, 
uh, you know, some people that I knew me from back in the day when I first came, you know, they see me and they say, you know, you're lucky. And I say, come on, it's not luck. It's hard work. That's all it takes, you know, hard work. And it's not luck, nothing. I mean, before it, I was like you, you know, I was able to, uh, willing to take chances, you know. By the way, by the by the way, yeah, I, uh, you worked on your English. It's perfect. Your English is perfect. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, my friends that came here even uh, two or three years before me, they still struggle to speak English. You know, come on. I went to school. I went to. You know, I even took speech classes. You know, at the uh, colleges. You did like accent elimination classes. Yeah, something like that. It you sounds know, it sounds accent. great. No, no, but, but I got to tell you something. It sounds really good. How many years have you been here? I've been here 20 years, Tom. Uh-huh. And you're 43 years old, so you came here at 23, and how was your English when you got here? Well, I my English was, wasn't that great. As a matter of fact, it was, at the beginning, I struggled a little bit because I knew how to read and write, but I couldn't speak, you know. Yeah. And when I tried to say something, people will go, oh, what do you say, what do you say, what do you say? And eventually I kind of got um, embarrassed at the beginning, but I said, you know, I cannot be embarrassed all my life. I had to do something about this. So I went to, uh, you know, took night classes to... Uh, you know, get uh, sharpen my English skills, you know. And eventually, uh, I started, you know, within a year that I came to this country, I started working in an office, you know. I went from working in a warehouse doing um, uh, warehouse stuff, you know, to working in an office doing accounts payables, you know. But it was, it was because I, I was able to um, take chances and do what I needed to do to get better. I, I I think it shows. All that hard work does show, Francisco. I think you've done great. All right, Tom. Well, can you uh, take me African style? I'll take you out African tribal style, absolutely. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Freddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Hey, just want to let you know I came to this country about almost 13, 14 years ago, but I started with zero 10 years ago, and uh, in 10 years span, I became a millionaire. And that's not with doing a business or anything, but... Uh, basically working my butt off and, uh, you know, starting with a $15,000 job and moving up and I run a company now. I thought only white people could do that. Well, that's what surprises me. I really think the biggest problem up here is really the uh, unemployment. I think once they pull out the unemployment, it forces everybody to work. And, and I, I mean, it's a shame. Majority of them don't see what, you know, what this country can offer. Yeah, and, I, I think it takes people coming in from out of the country who didn't right. grow up with it. To see the opportunities that are here. Right. And it's amazing that, I mean, that's so much up here. And, I mean, if a person like me can do it, you know, who has basically come, you know, and have done it in 10 years, I mean, you could definitely do it on that. You know, the only thing I wish on your show you could do more is uh, share some of the, uh, uh, you know, secrets to investing and things like that. That would be great on your show. But well, I can really enjoy your show, and I think uh, you're great. Well, thank you for that, Freddie. I appreciate that. Another successful individual. Amazingly, not of European descent. Unbelievable. It can be done, Tony. 1-800-5800-TOM. Noreen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hi, Tom. How are you? Great. A long-time listener, first-time caller. I love that. And I wanted to agree with you that the diversity is... Uh, you're absolutely correct. I'm Armenian. <clears throat> Came here when I was four. Um, I got married early. Have two kids. Married, and now I'm starting to take um, college, University of Phoenix, online. I work at a studio for 14 years, accounting. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know that you're absolutely right. If everybody wants to do what they want to do, they will get ahead. The, the opportunity is there if you don't do stupid things like get pulled over for drunk driving or knock up your girlfriend or smoke weed through high school and don't spend any time paying attention to showing up at classes. That's true. Stop calling the successful people lucky. That's what I say to those people. Yeah. People are just jealous of you. I can I don't know what to say. They're jealous because I hear you all the time and you do. You know, you did work yourself up to where you are and I'm really proud of you. <clears throat> and apparently people just don't understand that. They're just jealous. So, oh, well, they're lost. Noreen, thank you. 
Thank you, Tom. Blow me up. I'll blow you up. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Tim. First time caller. Thank you, Tim. Just wanted to say congratulations on your new house. Thank you. I wanted to say your advice is completely accurate. Going to school, working hard, and not having kids, not getting stuck with the alimony and the child support is the way to go. Got a bunch of friends. Uh, actually, I have a couple friends. One has a, a kid, and he's just working, you know, regular jobs all the time, just finding work, doing stuff, whatever. I got another buddy who had to join the military because he had four kids, four. And, uh, it, I mean, it slowed him down. He can't do anything. Basically, he's just stuck with whatever he can get. And uh, meanwhile, you know, I got my house. I'm going to school. Got my car that I want. You know, single, doing whatever I want. You know, I could just tell my friends, "Hey, you want to come crash at my house?" You know, for a while. I don't have to worry about anybody nagging. Nothing to worry about, man. Nobody to pay for extra dinners. Nobody to, you know, if I want to go to my buddy's house for the weekend at, in Huntington or whatever, I just roll out and do whatever I want, man. And it's great. So I just want to tell everybody out there, Tom's telling the truth. And you will be glad to know when I did the DTB um, that. Uh, email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man, the the ring on the finger, everything, man. And the thing is, too, you get him a big ring, and the finger will just grow to cover it up anyways. That's so. exactly right. <laughs> With a big, hairy knuckle around it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, by the way, I don't give a crap how you are. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. I'm 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Marcellus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How you doing, man? Doing great. Hey, Tom, I just want to point out one simple fact, man. Luck has everything to do with it, buddy. So I'm just lucky. You're very lucky. Let me let me explain it to you. Because these poor people having all these kids, you admit it yourself. Your family was poor, so by your standards, they shouldn't have had you. But they but did. they did. And you're lucky. But my family was poor. Exactly. Even though I became successful. Yeah, but but your daddy shouldn't have had you, Tom, because he was poor. Uh, he shouldn't have had me. Exactly. So you're lucky you're here. Uh, that well, that part is lucky. I'll go yeah. with that, but after that, we all start equally. We do. No, all right, now let me let me go back a little bit further for you, Tom. Those four unfortunate kids you almost had. You're lucky you didn't get AIDS when you laid down with those chicks. Because you obviously weren't using protection. Well, pal, you know, again, when we're talking about lucky or unlucky, we're talking about whether I'm lucky in terms of uh, th did I make money uh, because of luck or because of my hard work. These are funny jokes you're telling here, but uh, you know what we're talking about here. Exactly. But the point is, though, but you're saying luck has nothing to do with no matter Well, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm lucky I didn't uh, get hit by a bus. Exactly. But my point is, no matter how much hard work... If you had a contracted anything during those four changes, you wouldn't be where you are now. Hell, if your voice was different now, you wouldn't be where you are, regardless of how hard you want to get in the radio. If you sound like but even that, yelling, and guess but guess what? Uh, people can even work on that, and many people do. Yeah, what? What surgery? Vocal cord surgery? No, no, no. There are ways to believe me. And when I was a kid, uh, I and everyone in my family talked like Sylvester Stallone. There was nothing to brag about there. I can hear that. But, I took elocution classes. Yeah, but if you would if you would have sounded like Mike Tyson, I doubt Mike Tyson could ever get in radio. Hey, Mike Tyson is a multimillionaire until he spent it all. Yeah, but he wouldn't have made it in radio. He would have made it as a thug. All right, he found, but he found a way to make money. And there's another example of somebody who's successful, even with that voice. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Brants. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. How's it going, buddy? Doing okay. What kind of name right. is Brantz? Uh, I don't know, man. It's one of them southern names, family names. Who, who knows, really? Oh, boy. All right. Well, hey, try to stay with me here. I got a story. Uh, graduated from Florida, go Gators, uh, about two and a half years ago. Grew up in the south, small town. Got fed all that crap. One person for everybody, you know. Get married, all that stuff. Uh, dated this girl in school. 
graduated, came out here to California. She was going to move out here with me. Uh, been out here for about three months. Got turned on to your show but after about the first week. Uh, listened to it, never really took it to heart. Three months later, I went and leased this house, all this garbage for this girl. She calls me up three days before I fly back to get her. Says, oops, can't do it. Of course, you know, I sit around a pouch for a couple of days. So I'm listening to your show, leaving home from work on, on that Friday. All of a sudden, it just hit me. Took my bags, took my plane ticket to the airport, knew my buddies were down in Costa surfing, threw my ticket up on the table. I got a one-way ticket to Fort Lauderdale. I need a round-trip ticket to Coast, Costa Rica. Ever since then, man, just been living the way you preach. Oh, and like that, can I go back to the, what that one guy was saying? Just because one guy made it and he was poor doesn't mean we need it to accept, you know, millions of people to being poor and trying to make it. You know what I mean? I'm just blown away that the guy writes in and starts complaining that I happen to mention something that happened in my life, which I do all the time. Yeah. In this I, case, I bought I bought a second home. You would think everybody would be happy for me. Yeah, no kidding, right? But there's always somebody out there who's upset. They're angry. They're jealous. They're bitter. Yeah. Two kinds of people, man. People that want to make it or people that can and people that can't. And the only thing that separates is, the, is their decision. And anyone and the people that don't want to make that decision, all they can do is sit around and criticize. Well, you know what I say? Those who can do. Those who yeah. can't. Shine my shoes. Absolutely, man. It's a choice, and believe me. Hey, I just want to say what you're doing is good, brother. Keeping all these, uh, educating these kids, including myself, on how not to go impregnate women and become a burden on society. Thank you for that, Prance. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Jaime on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, what you're saying is, or the subject matter is very important, and I'm a 19-year-old college student. And um, I just wanted to say that I'm a Latin, um, a Latin young man, and I just wanted to say to all the young Latin men who are out there um, that I know that there's a lot of pressure for us to go out, and, you know, culturally it's very difficult sometimes in certain families and that the opportunities are out here, you know, are out there. I'm about ready to transfer to the university of California, Los Angeles. And, um, you know, my family has nothing. My family, you know, my father doesn't, you know, we're very poor and, but I, I educated myself. I went out there and now, you know, scholarships, everything's out there for every, you know, there's so much. And, uh, don't, and you took the time to find out what was out there for you. Yeah, you know, and it's just it, it's it's um, it's very there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, th I hear a lot of kids at you know at the community college because that's where I am. A lot of them say, "Oh, well, there's no there's nothing out there. You know, I have to work all the time." It's like I work a full time job and I'm taking calculus, chemistry. You know, I'm a I'm a pre med. Uh, you know, I'm going pre med, and it's like I. I, I I suffer just as much as any other California college student, but the opportunities are there for all you California community college students and university students. So I'm I, proud I, of you. I think that's fantastic, and you're you're the living proof of what I've been saying here. Yeah, and and I think it's a very a very great message that you're sending out to all of us. You know, all of us young people, because. You're giving us the you're, you're making us think about our futures and you know and I think that's a beautiful thing for you know young Californians because it's so expensive to live here no, no doubt about it I know it's expensive to live here uh, and if it's expensive to live here you got to go out there and get yourself a gig you got to get yourself a job you got to get yourself a career yeah um, I have a question for you though um, how do you uh, what what advice would you give a, a struggling you know young college student I know you come from a very poor family as well how do you you know how what, what advice can you give all of us you know for especially for young men uh in terms of what what kind of advice would you like just like you know with with how we you know because uh, a lot of a lot of uh, bachelor's degrees are pretty much worthless now you know what would you suggest we do well first of all when you pick a major make sure you pick one that has real potential yeah. 
Uh, when I read about these people who are taking courses in French art or literature, I laugh. I mean, who can afford to do that? You need to be there finding out what your career is going to be. Yeah. And that means you need to do a little research on things you're interested in to see how lucrative they are and then tailor your major to that. Yeah. Well, it, that's you know, that's good that you tell me that because a lot of people uh, at the colleges they tell you to do what you do what you feel is uh do what you love to do and you know, but I'm thinking in terms, man, I got to I got to do something that's going to produce if I'm going to invest. I know people who love to smoke weed and they're doing what they love to do and you know where they're going to end up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a good analogy. <laughs> right. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Tom, and, um, you know, keep spreading the message, man. Thank you for that, Jaime. All right. Thank you for the call. Prove my point. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. See, the jealous people are disappearing now because they've been made fools of. They, they look foolish. They do. Joel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Good. Uh, I'm, first of all, I'll say I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm a graphic design student at Cal State San Bernardino um, in my senior year, and uh, I had to take a marketing class a couple quarters ago, and uh, you had all these callers calling in that were, uh, you know, immigrants and not from this country, and uh, I was one of the only four people that were white in that class, and I'd say 50% of the class was uh, either from the Middle East or from Asia or in another country, and I just thought it was funny that uh, we have so many – so many white males out, the parents pay for everything, and they, you know, wondering why their lives suck, and we have all these other people coming to our country that are, you know, working their butt off and uh, making a living and stealing their jobs. Anyone who doesn't believe this, who has a job and health insurance at your job, open up the list of uh, doctors that they ask you to pick, a, like, a, a main doctor when you uh, get health insurance at your job. And see how many names in there you can't pronounce. <laughs> Seriously. And that doesn't tell you how many people come to this country for the amazing opportunities. And how many of them come here who are not of European descent. Right, 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 right. It's all right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, the same thing in my in my own department in graphic design. I hang out with maybe three or four other students, and we're having these awesome opportunities. I'm leaving in January to go on my second trip to Thailand and we're getting all these opportunities to do all these great things and do design and, and stuff outside of school already and everybody else is, you know, getting torn up in critique and they're wondering why, you know, the teachers don't like their stuff and they're just doing what they want to get by and we, we all laugh at them. It's like, you put in your time and you, you work your butt off and, you know, it's worth it. Absolutely right, Joel. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jameson? On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing great. Um, yeah, I just got a comment about uh, the letter, man. You know, when when people talk about how people with European descent have all the all the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Opportunities, all the opportunities. All the... Yeah, it just makes me mad, dude. Cause it's like the biggest cop out in the world. You know, it's just a big excuse to say to feel sorry for yourself and say, oh well. He's got this and he's got that and look at me. You know, I grew up in, you know, my family was, you know, middle, lower class, struggling and stuff like that. And uh, I watched people, do just go down in my neighborhood and everything like that and drugs, gangs, all that jazz. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's all in your mindset. It's all your mindset. It's all what you believe you can do. You know, if you want to sit there and cry about how he's got this and he's got that and he's white and he gets all the chances, then you're just bit digging a deeper hole for yourself, you know? Yep, you're absolutely right. But uh, that's all I really had to say, Tom, and, you know, you do a pretty good job. I don't agree with everything you say, but I enjoy listening to you. And uh, can you take me out with the bong rip? And thank you, Jesus. I can, James, and here you go. Jesus. And thank you, Jameson. The Tom Likas Show.